Bring it back. Hi guys, what's going on? I'm Evo Loz, and today we are back with another episode of Car Mechanics Simulator 2018. So today we are going to be rebuilding this Volvo 850R. So a little bit different from some of the cars we've had. Um, I don't know a tremendously large amount about Volvo. Um, I've made a bit of a start. I've sorted out the suspension and the bodywork, all the rust and everything. Um, didn't really pan out my paint scheme quite as planned. I was trying to go for the blue of like, um, obviously the latest Volvo is like the Volvo Polestar series, um, which is Volvo's like racing team as such. Um, so I was trying to go for that sort of blue that they use, um, but it doesn't quite look right. <laughs> Um, let's take a little bit of a look around the car. You know, it's a classic uh, Volvo Estate. Obviously, this is their sort of hot hatch version, as such. Um, I think after the they had success with like the Volvo 5T, I think it was where they did like a limited production run, um, and then that was so successful for them that they then uh, did a, a much larger run of the 850Rs. I think it's supposed to have a five-cylinder inline uh, engine, actually. But unfortunately, because this is modded content, there aren't any uh, inline fives in the game at all. So unfortunately, we're going to have to make do with uh, an inline four. So not ideal, I'm afraid. But I think that's all that's in the game at the moment. Uh, hopefully, there'll be more engines available in the future. But for now, I think that's all we've got to make use of. So um, yes, yeah, so I sorted out all the suspension, but we've still got to redo all the engine. So I think first thing first will be to get this thing apart and see what we've got. So let's take off the throttle body and the intake, like so. Um, then we'll probably want to do the engine head cover, and we can then take the cam out. I think probably um, I don't actually know off the top of my head, but I suspect it's probably a double overhead cam. Um, but um, again, there's a limited number of engines available in the game currently. As they release, as the game developers release more DLC and um, a different variety of engines get added into the game, we can expect to see a bit more choice for mods like this, um, which will make them a lot better. But unfortunately, for now, we can only sort of make do with what we've got. So we've exposed that. We want to take the timing chain off, um, or the timing belt. So we have to take all the auxiliary belts off first. Seven time belts. Overall, then we've got all the things like the power steering pump, which will be the alternator and the water pump. There and the alternator, and then take the crankshaft pulley off. And the timing cover should come off. Uh, belt tensioner, and then we can take the timing belt off. So in the cam gear, and then we can now pull the cam out like that. It's excellent. So then we want to take this uh, engine head off, although it may require me, of course, to take the ignition wires off first. And I can pull the engine head off. Oh no, I can't. Of course, take the uh, spark plugs out would be a wise move. And then take the engine head off. Excellent, there we go. And then they should expose the pistons, which it does. Take the fuel filter off that's floating. Uh, so then I want to pop out to the stand and spin it round so it's underneath. Um, we're now going to take, uh, well, we'll take the oil filter off first, and then we'll take the sump off the bottom which should expose the crankshaft well we can then hopefully take the rod caps off and then remove the pistons so if we go in and take each of them out oops like so then we should be able to pull out uh, each of the pistons and piston rings individually Where's the last one? There it is. Okay, like that. So uh, the next main thing we want to get out is actually the crankshaft, crankshaft itself. So there's a couple of bearing caps holding this in. And then we'll have to take the clutch assembly off the end as well. And then we should be able to remove that. Let's take that off like that. Then let's head down to the release bearing, pressure plate, clutch plate, and then the flywheel. clutch plate and then the fly rail. So then if we hop back over we should now be able to take the crankshaft out. We can. And then I think that is everything off the engine itself which it is so we can then disassemble the block which is good. So I'm now going to head over to the repair bench and see what we can salvage from the engine. 
not a particularly exciting part of the game. This just have to it's just smashing through and see what can be repaired and what has to be brought again from scratch. And there we go. So let's have a look what got repaired and what we're going to have to change. Um, I have preemptively brought a few aftermarket parts and things to make changes. Obviously, um, being an inline four, I think it produces uh, a standard. This engine is about 140 horsepower. I think the uh, 850R should be around more the 250 mark. So hopefully, with a few mods, I can get this up a little bit closer to what it should be. So uh, first things first, we're just going to re basically rebuild it in reverse order. So put the block down, which is brand new. Then we're going to drop in the new crankshaft and secure that in place. We'll then go through and put in the four new pistons. I uh, have got rather unnecessarily some forged pistons. Uh, which at 250 horsepower probably is not even remotely required, but there we go. So we'll drop in the four pistons first. And then we shall secure them all on with the rod caps on the back. Like so. And then once we've done this, we'll then be able to put uh, the oil sump back on the bottom. And then turn the engine back around, back up to the right way around. Like so. Set the oil sump back on. Then let's hop out of this mode. Go back to the engine stand and turn it back around. So, let's go back to the mount mode. So, we'll put the head on first. So again, this is a, a, an upgraded aftermarket head. Um, pretty similar, bar some rather nice little red valve covers, which I always enjoy. Um, we'll stick on the camshaft and secure this in. Aha! That's an error, so I've not got, I need to buy some new camshaft caps. So let's head out to the shop. And get, what's it, five or six? We'll get six just to be on the safe side. Six of these. And get these bolted into place. I only needed five. Then we can reassemble all the, basically the timing belt, um, and then the auxiliary belts on top of that. One more. I also forgot to get, <laughs> thinking of all the things I forget now. Uh, so I need another cam gear. I want one of them. Um, I also want a timing belt, because I forgot about that as well. And what else? Oh, a belt tensioner. It's funny, I try and think of all the things I'm going to need to buy before I start these videos. So that I have everything to hand, but I just. I never seem to be able to remember everything. <laughs> so let's drop the cam gear on the end of the camshaft. Then we can put the timing belt on and the belt tensioner. Obviously extremely important. Do not want uh, the timing belt to skip any teeth. Otherwise that would be rather bad for the health of the valves. So we'll set the timing cover back on. So now we've just got all the ancillary belts and different parts. Like the power steering pump, water pump on the alternator. Uh, for some reason, it, I was able to buy uh, an aftermarket alternator. And, um, seems completely pointless. Um, I'm not sure why they bothered putting that in as a performance part. There we go. Crank shaft pulley and the idle roller there. So then we should have uh, an assortment of the different belts to put on. One there. And one there. Which is good. So we're now going to come back up to the top. Put the engine head cover back on, bolt that into place, and then we can look at the intake manifold. So we've got a uh, fuel filter, a nice little red racing fuel filter. Intake manifold, get that bolted into place, and we should have a fuel rail and the throttle body on the end. Nice throttle body. And oh, even a Rated racing fuel rail. Um, so what else have we got to do? Of course we have got to... Ooh, oil filter. I forgot all about that. And then we have got to sort out the clutch assembly on the back again. Should just be a quick job. Um, I think we have got things like lightened fly reels and that sort of thing we can stick on. So let's have a look. I've also got the... Oh, do that one afterwards. So we'll stick the fly reel on. 
Um, and then we've got sort of an upgraded clutch plate, um, pressure plate, and then there should just be a release bearing as well. Pretty hard to see because it's so close up to the uh, the engine stand. There we go. So we want um, just an ignition coil. Uh, one of them and some ignition wires. So let's get these dropped back into place. Then we've all we've got to do is the spark plugs. So we've got some uh, fancy spark plugs. We've spent a fortune on them. Drop them into place. Then we should be able to stick the ignition wires on the top. Ah, oh, nice and red. There we go. So I think that's everything back on the engine. Um, I don't think I've missed anything, but I can never remember. So let's take this engine off the stand. Let's get the stand up. Take engine off, and then we can open the bonnet and use the engine crane to install our brand new engine. Excellent, like that. Oh, it's even got a little, uh, little intake. So, with that in, let's first thing first, we're going to have to take the car back up. Hopefully, not smash the bonnet into the roof. Stop. Good. Then, we're going to have to put on the gearbox. Get that bolted back into place. Put the exhaust back up. Um, and we're going to have to fit uh, an exhaust manifold back on. But I think that's going to want to do it for the engine bay, it is, and the starter motor. And um, we've also got the drive shaft because this is a rear-wheel drive car. Like so. So I think we've got everything sorted down this end, which we have. So let's lower the car back down. Um, and then we've just got to get the exhaust manifold connected up. Let's move this engine crane out of the way. So let's get the exhaust manifold connected up and get the starter motor up. So we don't have to bump start it. There we go, the exhaust manifold. Like so. And then just the little starter motor so we can get going. Um, then I just need to drop some oil into the engine. That'll be a fairly critical thing to forget. Like so. Close the engine and let's go and bung it on the dyno, I think. Um, what have we got? Dino. Let's see what, if anything, has been improved. Oh, let's put a dyno test. I don't think it's going to produce, so it's 138 as standard. You know, it's obviously not very accurate to an 850R. Obviously, I was aiming for 250. I don't think we're going to get that. Maybe if we can get up to 200, at least it gives uh, something similar to a, an increase in performance. 179. Well, not amazing. Quite a bit off an 850R. What it should be, but then I guess we are missing a whole extra cylinder. So that's the test complete. Let's hop out of that screen. Now let's take the car back down to the front of the garage, and then we'll have to take it out for a little bit of a spin on the track. So let's head out and head to the racetrack. Well, the fact it lets me take it means I've not forgotten anything. Um, it's often easy to miss a part off the engine or miss a symbol a little bit, and it will, uh, won't let you take it out to the racetrack. So, let's see what this thing can do. Um, I have no idea how this thing's going to handle. reasonably. Um, it's obviously bearing in mind I'm doing this with the keyboard so it's not the uh, easiest driving method ever. Well I hope you've sort of enjoyed this video guys. Um, I think uh, generally received good feedback about doing the different various different cars. Um, it's unfortunate that it's not ooh, not perfectly to correct with the engine. Um, but I think hopefully as the game goes forward we're going to see sort of a wider variety of engines. Because I've had a similar problem with things like some of the Porsches and uh, some of the Subarus which should have like flat 4s, flat 6s um, and there aren't currently any 
with such uh, engine configurations in the game. Oops, there's the wall. Um, so yes, and there's no inline fires currently in the game, which is a shame. But let me know what you think in the comments below about this mod and about the video. Did you enjoy it? Um, was there anything else on the car that was sort of particularly inaccurate? Um, or did you find it to be not too bad? So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please like, subscribe to the channel for more car mechanics simulator content. Thanks, guys, and I shall see you on the next one.